Looking to invest in a durable business that has proven itself out over centuries? Like the idea of getting a market beating yield and double digit dividend growth? Want a good deal on a great stock that's expected to experience accelerating growth? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best selling author. 30 year old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is the world's largest trust bank. This company has been around for centuries. What makes it so enduring and durable? Well, the banking business model is one of the oldest and best business models in the world. This bank takes it to the next level. They have over 40 trillion dollars in assets under custody and administration. This is a massive base of very sticky assets. And rising interest rates acts like a rising tide lifting this bank's boat. That should mean more fee revenue, higher profits, and bigger dividends. I've personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Bank of New York Mellon Corp, which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Bank of New York Mellon Corp, stock ticker BK, is a global financial services company. Founded in 1784, Bank of New York Mellon is now a $34 billion by market cap financial giant that employs nearly 50,000 people. Bank of New York Mellon provides a range of investment management and financial services in more than 100 markets across 35 countries. The bank has three business segments, security services, 45% of fiscal year 2021 revenue, market and wealth services, 30%, and investment and wealth management, 25%. Bank of New York Mellon is the largest global custody bank in in the world with over $46 trillion in assets under custody and administration. They also have approximately $2.3 trillion in assets under management. If these numbers haven't already clued you in, this is a powerhouse bank that provides critical services behind the global banking infrastructure. This is basically on the opposite end of the spectrum from an SNL bank. In particular, Bank of New York Mellon specializes in institutional services, which includes trade execution, custody, securities lending, and clearance and settlement. A broad array of accounting and administrative services are also available. Through industry consolidation and advancements towards sticky custody assets, Bank of New York Mellon has built an enviable business model focused on scalable fee-based security servicing and fiduciary businesses. Indeed, fee revenue accounted for roughly 80% of total fiscal year 2021 revenue. Because of the scale, stickiness of assets, and fee-based business model, the path of least resistance for the company is to slowly but surely grow larger. And that bodes very well for their ability to continue growing their dividend. Already, the bank has increased its dividend for 11 consecutive years. Their 10-year dividend growth rate is 10.5%, which is very solid. That said, there was some deceleration in the dividend growth over the last few years or so, but I see that as a consequence of the financial environment, not as a result of some structural issue with the business. The pandemic in particular hampered dividend growth. However, with the environment perking up somewhat, the bank's most recent dividend increase of 9.7% was right on the mark. In addition, the stock offers an appealing 3.2% yield here. That market beating yield is 90 basis points higher than its own five-year average. A flip of sorts has occurred here. The dividend growth hasn't been consistently high over the last five years, but the yield has also risen rather dramatically in the interim. So the stock has essentially turned into more of a current income vehicle. And I don't think that's the worst thing in the world, especially if the dividend growth returns to its former state. With the payout ratio at only 32.9%, the bank has plenty of room to raise the dividend over the years to come. I like dividend growth stocks in what I call the sweet spot. That's a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with high single digit or better dividend growth. We're definitely in the sweet spot here. 
Looking at business growth, Bank of New York Mellon increased its revenue from $14.1 billion in fiscal year 2012 to $15.9 billion in fiscal year 2021. That's a compound annual growth rate of 1.3%. Not exactly inspiring, however, this period has been about as challenging as it possibly gets for the bank. Rates have been persistently low, global growth has been muted, and then a pandemic hit. Meanwhile, earnings per share grew from $1.73 to $4.14 over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 10.2%. That's impressive. What we can see here is even with very little revenue growth, the bank can still put up strong EPS growth. Just imagine what they could do with better top line growth. A combination of profitability improvement and extensive share buybacks helped to propel a lot of this excess bottom line growth. Regarding that latter point, the outstanding share count is down by 27% over the last 10 years. Looking forward, CFRA believes that Bank of New York Mellon will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 12% over the next three years. That would represent a mild acceleration in EPS growth relative to what the bank has done over the last decade. Is it unreasonable to expect that? I don't think so. One of the big anchors weighing this enterprise down has been low rates. Their asset base is constrained, but the US Federal Reserve is almost guaranteed to raise rates aggressively over the course of this year. As such, Bank of New York Mellon and its ilk will benefit. Like I stated only moments ago, the bank was able to put up a 10% plus compound annual growth rate in its EPS during a very challenging period with low rates and limited top line growth. If you lighten the weight of that rate anchor, the bank's ability to head skyward increases. Meantime, a big reason why Bank of New York Mellon has done so well over the last decade despite low rates is because of its scalable fee-based business model. Since the company has a substantial asset management business, it should continue to prosper alongside the global capital markets. It's built to succeed without high rates, but if rates rise, all the better. With the payout ratio being so low, anything close to CFRA's EPS growth forecast easily sets the company up to deliver high single digit or low double digit dividend raises for the foreseeable future. And when you're already starting off with a 3.2% yield, that's compelling. Moving over to the balance sheet, the company has a solid financial position. The bank has $444.4 billion in total assets against $401.0 billion in total liabilities. The Bank of New York Mellon's long-term senior debt has credit ratings that are well into investment grade territory. S&P, AA-, Moody's, AA-2, and Fitch, AA. I also think it's now appropriate to point out that Warren Buffett has given his seal of approval to the bank. Berkshire Hathaway Inc. has a long-time investment in Bank of New York Mellon that is worth over $3 billion. Profitability is robust with nice margin expansion over the last decade. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 24.5% and annual return on equity of 10.1%. This company has been doing business for nearly 250 years. One of the bank's founders was Alexander Hamilton. You know, one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. It's an incredible story. Helping the bank to endure are durable competitive advantages that include massive scale, secure positioning in banking infrastructure, entrenched relationships built around sticky assets, and industry know-how around regulatory matters. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Ongoing downward pressure and fees across banking in general could limit the company's long-term growth trajectory. The bank's asset management business faces pressures of its own from the rise of low-cost passive alternatives. Also, the economic fallout from the pandemic remains unknown, any lasting economic scars could negatively affect the bank. And while rates are rising, they're still historically low. These are risks to seriously consider, but I still think this bank could be a great long-term investment. That's especially true with the stock 31% off of its 52-week high and looking very undervalued. The stock's price earnings ratio is 11.1. .1. That's much lower than the broader market's earnings multiple. It's also lower than its own five-year average of 12.3. Also, the price to book ratio of 0.9 is notably lower than its own five-year average of 1.2. And the yield, as noted earlier, is significantly higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7%. That dividend growth rate is lower than the bank's demonstrated dividend growth and EPS growth over the last decade. It's also quite a bit lower than the near-term EPS growth forecast expectation from CFRA. The most recent dividend increase came in much higher than this and the payout ratio is low. Overall, you could say that I'm being very conservative here. I think caution is appropriate. The global economy is currently in a precarious position. As a consequence, banks are arguably in a precarious position. I think it's very possible, if not likely, that the company exceeds this growth rate over the long run, but I would rather err on the side of caution. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $48.51. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. Dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends 
dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates BK as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $55. CFRA rates BK as a three-star hold with a 12-month target price of $50. I came out low this time around, averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $51.17, which would indicate the stock is possibly 14% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Bank of New York Mellon Corp operates a great business that has shown an incredible level of durability for more than two centuries. Its founding can be traced back to the founding of the USA. With a market beating yield, double digit long-term dividend growth, a low payout ratio, more than 10 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the potential that shares are 14% undervalued, this could be your opportunity to buy a Buffett approved dividend growth stock while it looks cheap. And now for a special news announcement, Albemarle Corporation stock ticker ALB just reported a Q1 report that blew away expectations. They beat on the top line and the bottom line. More impressively, they raised guidance meaningfully. Fiscal year 2022 adjusted EPS guidance was raised to a range of $9.25 to $12.25 from $5.65 to $6.65 previously, far above the $6.22 analyst consensus estimate. I've covered Albemarle numerous times on the channel as a great way for long-term dividend growth investors to get exposure to the powerful secular growth in lithium. If you don't yet own a slice of this dividend aristocrat, you might want to start questioning that decision. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the fire fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early thirties. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.